this morning we were able to have uh, several, well there's a lot of you that are guests this morning and we're thankful that you have chosen to come and uh, worship with us today, no doubt because this church and this church family is uh, dear to you and connected in your life in some way. Uh, and so we're glad that you took time out and chose to come and gather with us today. So really and truthfully, they finished this job on like a Tuesday. And they said, y'all can be back in the sanctuary. Well, we didn't have... They were done with the painting and the nailing, but we weren't ready with the sound system. So we took one more week uh, in the gym. And then I said, I'd really like to kick... Our, our dedication service out two weeks and try to have a big day and invite some folks to come and just uh, celebrate the goodness of God. I don't know how long it's been since there was a, a major project for the, for the sanctuary uh, like this, but it's been a while, and uh, we just want to say thank God. Thank God. We're, we're, we're glad to have it done. And so... Those other pastors in the room, I know you know what I'm about to say and can, can connect with this. When you say, let's have a big day, uh, you can't really have a big day if, if folks don't show up to your big day. So thank you for coming. It takes a load off my shoulders. You know, it's one thing to say, let's have a party and nobody comes to the party. So <laughs> thank, you for, thank you for being here today. We're, we're honored to have each of our guests that have come uh, to celebrate with us. Like I mentioned, uh, Sister uh, Billy Sue, who's not a guest, she's a member of the church, but uh, she hasn't been able to come in quite a while. We're glad to have, we're glad to have her with us. It's an honor always when I get to have my mom and dad uh, in service with us. They very faithfully attend their church in East End. They've come down today to celebrate with us, and then uh, uh, I want to uh, take time to recognize we have two uh, former. Well, I guess three <laughs> former pastors uh, uh, in in the congregation uh, this morning. When I say well, three uh, Pastor Matt, I, I forget sometimes, brother, that he's a former pastor. He's not just the youth pastor, uh, former youth pastor, but former pastor here as well. I'm sorry about that, but we're glad that you're able to be here today. Uh, but I do want to uh, uh, to recognize this morning, uh, brother uh, Joey Ruth has uh, come down from Missouri to be with us uh, today. Brother, would you stand and, and just uh, maybe introduce your family and, and have a brief greeting? Hi, I'm Joey. This is my brother, Gerald. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, uh, we're really excited to be here today. You couldn't be more excited for this church. Uh, you couldn't leave the church after Sunday and come here for the church. You couldn't leave the church after somewhere else that would be your heart. That's part of your heart that would stay here. Sure. And that's what happened. And so uh, everybody can remember Krista that's fairly easy because <laughs> Which, who you may not remember, this is Bryce. Bryce, Bryce stand up. Bryce was in third grade when we were here at Pathway. Um, and in two weeks, he turned 18 and is starting his senior year of high school. Wow. Yeah, I don't mind. <laughs> and then this is Cole. Cole was preschool when we left. Wow. And is now 13 and going to be in eighth grade going on his senior year of high school. <laughs> We're glad to have you. Welcome. Welcome. And then uh, Brother Terry Morgan made the trip down also from up north, <laughs> but not quite as far, uh, but uh, still a good drive from Timbo, Arkansas. Uh, Brother Terry, would you stand and, and greet everybody? Let us know who you got with you. <laughs> Church, uh, it's done, it's been back to us, it's been 
Yay. <laughs> yeah, right. That's why I'm having y'all do that instead of me trying. <laughs> Amen. So I'm going to put you on the spot now, Pastor Matt. I know you're a former pastor, current youth pastor, so stand up, greet everybody. <laughs> on the spot. You didn't know it was coming. <laughs> So, <clears throat> of course, I uh, also want to take a moment to recognize other former pastors who uh, couldn't be here today because of their schedules. Uh, like I said, it was very short notice, so I think it's just wonderful that uh, those of you that are here were able to come on such short notice. But uh, uh, Brother uh, Wayne McGuire, who pastors in uh, is it Fayetteville, Lafayette, Lafayette, Indiana, uh, and uh, was not able to be here because of his, you know, church commitments. And then uh, brother <clears throat> Tyler Harris, who uh, he's in Georgia, I believe, uh, and uh, so wasn't able to join us today. And of course, uh, brother Stoker, uh, who uh, visited with yesterday, brother Stoker told me he's, he, he said, I'm 94, and if I make it to December, it'll be 95. So, uh, but uh, he's still uh, he's still here in uh, Bearden, but just his health won't allow him uh, to uh, to do very much anymore. But uh, want to say that this what is here is, you know, because of these other ministries, uh, these other ministers, these other pastors, and their faithfulness to the Lord, the work that they did the time that they served, the prayers that they prayed. Uh, this is a product of their ministry and their time here as well. Uh, they tended the flock of God. They preached the word of God. They prayed for you all. They ministered to the needs. And uh, so we, we, stand on, we stand on each other's shoulders and, and we, we say thank you, God, that we have reached this point uh, in our history. This is a, an historic church. Uh, you know, this building right here has been here over 100 years. I've uh, seen a lot of changes. Uh, but one thing that has not changed is Jesus is still the Savior. The Holy Ghost is still available. And God still saves and God still heals. And uh, I don't see how it could be. But if, if the Lord Jesus tarries his return another 100 years, I hope they're still celebrating the goodness of God. Uh, here in uh, in Bearden at First Assembly, and uh, and you know the, the church stays on fire and empowered for God to reach the lost in our area. So, before I get uh, too much further, before I get into my actual sermon uh, for today, I wanted to take a moment and actually do a little dedication uh, ceremony. Uh, now that we have completed this part of the building, started right after I came, we uh, started on the foyer. If you didn't come in through the front, you owe it to yourself to go out through the, through the front doors because uh, 
what a change. That's just, wow, it's so different than when I first came. The little hallway and the two rooms on either side, and now it's so open and, and beautiful uh, out front. <clears throat> and then the new sound booth. This is what we're dedicating today, rededicating. The foyer of that project, the new sound booth, this sanctuary, <clears throat> the new sound system components that we have added, brand new drum set. Uh, God has been so good to us. Not only that, but if you notice, there's a brand new sign out front on, on the road that we're very pleased uh, with and, and think it looks great. Uh, I know I'm going to leave some things out that we've done. There's been a, a lot of other little housekeeping type things. Uh, but for all of this, and we stand here today, we've got desires for things to happen in the future, but we give thanks for what God has done today. So we're going to rededicate this building, and we're going to rejoice in its holy use for the things of God until the Lord says, it's enough. Come on up. Come on home. So, uh, to the glory of God, who has called us by His grace, to the honor of the Lord Jesus Christ, who has loved us and gave Himself for us, to the praise of His Holy Spirit, who, illumina who illumines and sanctifies us. Now, I want you, I know that in our tradition of church, we don't do response very much, but I want you to respond right now. I want you to say, we dedicate this house. We said, Amen. All right. For the worship of God in prayer and praise, for the preaching of the everlasting gospel, for the celebration of the holy sacraments and of baptism, we dedicate this house. For the comfort of mourners, for the strength of the struggling, for the salvation of those that are tempted. To light for the light of those who are lost in the darkness, we dedicate this house. For the, for the sanctity of family life, for the teaching and guiding and mentorship of the young, and for the perfecting of the saints, we dedicate this house. For the salvation of sinners, for the promotion of righteousness, for the extension of of God's reign on earth, we dedicate this house. In the unity of the faith, in the bond of brotherhood and sisterhood, in love and in goodwill towards all, we dedicate this house. In gratitude for labor, for those in times past who love this church and who have served this church, in loving remembrance of those who have finished their course and gone ahead of us to rest, in the hope that we shall see them in that glad, eternal day, this house. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, God, for your blessing. Thank you, Lord, for the many pastors and teachers and song leaders and choir leaders, choir members, those who have served and poured out their lives in service to you in this church, Lord. For all the ministers called into the ministry, for missionaries called to the mission field, for lives saved and names written in the book of life, God, for the many untold miracles and signs and wonders that have taken place in these sacred walls since this church was founded, we give you thanks and we give you praise. And now, Lord, we dedicate that what comes forward from here until you say it is the end will be done to give you glory and to give you praise forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So this morning I'd like to share just a few minutes uh, a message that God has given me uh, for today. There's nothing like the Word. Uh, there's nothing like the Word of God. And I don't want to gather together to celebrate God and not take a minute <clears throat> to get into His Word and see what the Lord would, would speak to us. And so as I thought about what to say today, there were several thoughts that came across my mind about ways that I could take these remarks. Finally, uh, 
finally on Tuesday, I feel like the Lord gave me direction for the service, and I started thinking about the passage of Scripture that is found in your Bibles in Acts chapter number 7. Uh, in Acts chapter number 7, one of the, uh, one of the church's ministers, this young man full of fire for God who'd been saved by Jesus Christ, been filled with the Holy Spirit, and now he is being stoned, getting ready to be stoned to death for his testimony in Jesus Christ. And Stephen, before they stone him, he begins to give his testimony. And he goes back and he talks about how God brought the people up out of Egypt and he gave them a tent of meeting. He gave them a tabernacle with them in the, in the wilderness. And that's where God met with them. And then he talks about how when God brought them into the promised land, God uh, built uh, a temple. And then when that temple was destroyed, there was a second temple built. And at Stephen's time, the second temple would have been one of the wonders of the world. It was a truly magnificent building that had been built and, and edified and, and built up, and it was, a, it was, it was huge. It, would, you know, it, it was just a, a, a marvel. And Jesus had said that that temple was being replaced, and Stephen gave testimony to what Jesus had talked about. And his, <laughs> his sermon went over so well that day that they took up stones and, and stoned him. But I want to take just a few moments to look at what Stephen said as we dedicate this house to the Lord today. Just a very few of these verses. It says in Acts, uh, chapter, number, <clears throat> in Acts chapter number 7, verse 44, Our ancestors carried the tabernacle with them through the wilderness. It was constructed according to the plan that God had shown Moses. Years later, when Joshua led our ancestors to battle against the nations God drove out of this land, the tabernacle was taken with them into the new territory. It stayed there until the time of King David. David found favor with God, and he asked for the privilege of building a permanent temple for the God of Jacob. But it was Solomon who actually built it. However, the Most High doesn't live in temples made by human hands. This is the part that I really love and that I really felt like God was speaking to me about today. He says, as the prophet says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Could you build me a temple as good as that, asks the Lord. Could you build me such a resting place? Didn't my hands make both heaven and earth? Father God, help me to minister what you have laid on my heart for today. Let it speak to our hearts today. Lord, feed us from your word of life today, God, that we would take something away from this that is God-given that will help us and minister to us in our time of need. In Jesus' name we pray. So it's the house, the church that God built. You see, they were so proud of that temple that they had standing there in Jerusalem in that day. <clears throat> and when Stephen said, you know, what kind of temple could you build for me? Heaven is my throne. The earth is my footstool. I've created all of heaven and all of earth. He was saying, as great as you guys think this building is, <laughs> it's nothing compared to what God has in store. Now, folks, I don't mean to, uh, you know, cast any. I've already told you how proud and, and pleased and wonderful that we have such a beautiful place to worship God and to bring our families for baptisms and, and weddings and you know, all the other celebrations that come with, with family. But can you just imagine how beautiful heaven's going to be? How wonderful it's going to be when we see what God has built. You know, it's amazing to me what craftsmen who, who know how to use uh, tools of the trade can come and, and do uh, in this building. It, it looks like a brand new church on the inside. And it amazes me. But how wonderful is the house that God builds and so you know i want to i want to just bring out a couple of, of points here the house that god builds and the place where god dwells needs to be a place where god's power 
is in first place. It's preeminent. Whereas power is preeminent. There's a lot of things we can do in a wonderful room like this. We can sing songs uh, of praise. We can have sermons. We can show videos. We can have graduation services. We can have funerals. We can have all kinds of different meetings and things that take place, and it's a comfortable and a beautiful place to do so. But folks, if we want this to truly be the church that lasts and the place that God built, the power of God is what has to be preeminent here. It's got to be about Jesus and not about anybody or anything else. It's got to be about Jesus and letting him do what only Jesus can do, which is to save the lost, to baptize with the Holy Spirit, to heal the sick, to give wisdom to those that are without it, to be a light in the darkness. We've got to let, the, <clears throat> we've got to let God be God, right? It's got to be about him. Well, that's not what I want at my church. Well, that's not the way my, I don't want it to be my church. I am pleased and, and just awed is the proper word that God would choose me and allow me to stand as a shepherd in God's house with God's people and God's things. And it's all about the Lord. It's sort of like, uh, you know, think about this. If you got, if somebody were to give you just the most beautiful piece of, of art that, that you can think of, whatever you like, whatever kind of artwork it is, a landscape or whatever, just a beautiful piece of art that was just incredibly expensive, more than you could hope to afford. They were to give it to you. You start looking in your house. Where am I going to hang this thing? Where am I going to put it? Where am I going to put this beautiful piece of art? Well, I doubt that you'd go to your unused uh, spare bedroom and, and hang it on a wall there, right? I, do, I doubt you'd hang it in your carport, <laughs> right? It wouldn't probably be outside on the, on the patio. I bet you you would take a room. I'm talking about something that is absolutely prized and valued more than you. You'd probably take a room, and you'd find the focal point of that room, and you'd hang that beautiful piece of art there and you might put lights on it spotlights or whatever to to emphasize it i bet you would arrange the furniture so that when people come in and visit you or sit there in that room they'd be looking at that beautiful piece of art you would make it preeminent in the room right yeah you want people to notice it what more should we want people to notice when they come in this room than the God who loves them, the God who saves them, the God who can give them freedom from their sin? We've got to be sure in this beautiful place that God has given us. You see, it was talked about in Sunday school. There's lots of churches all over this world that are closing down and becoming bars or nightclubs or museums or just derelict buildings that aren't used for anything. We want to be sure that this building from now till the end of time is used for the glory of God. So let's keep Jesus first when we come in here. Amen. Let's keep the power of God first in this room. Uh, I like how uh, the scripture says Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. By him were all things created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, and all things were created, what? By him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Why has there been an Assembly of God church on this lot for all these years? Why has land been donated and buildings been added and remodeling and all this for over 100 years? Because God has his plans for this place. And men and women over the years have said, I want Jesus to be glorified. So I'm going to serve him. I'm going to give. I'm going to do because I want Jesus to be glorified. If they'd have done it so they could be glorified or so that they could get their way, I dare say there wouldn't be a vibrant church on this lot today because things don't go well when we put ourselves first. And so we stand on their heritage today. You see, it's not only a house where he is preeminent, but it's a house where Jesus is promoted, where he is promoted. Jesus came to the temple in Mark, and he got upset. He came to the temple, and, and he found out 
that there were things going on in the temple in Jerusalem that were not supposed to be going on. They were <clears throat> tables set up and they were buying and selling. It was like a marketplace. You know the story from the scripture? Jesus went and, and made a, a whip and he turned over the tables and he chased the money changers out. And he said, what? My house is to be a house of prayer for all nations. Wow. Jesus was so upset because the program became more important than the purpose. What? You know what started them having money changers out there? They knew that people were traveling for the festival and some of them had to come from a long ways and, and it was easier just to come to the temple and buy your sacrifice once you got there rather than tote that thing on a two or three day journey, you know, a live animal with you. So it started for a good purpose, right? But instead it became the purpose. A way to make money, a money exchange, a way and the way I read it, the way I study it, and, and if I'm wrong, it doesn't really matter too much, but what I see is like how other things go in human endeavor. When they had, you can purchase your lamb or your turtle dove or whatever the sacrifice is. Well, hey, why don't we also set up, uh, you know, where they can buy uh, lunch? Well, why don't we also set up where they can buy souvenirs? Let's have trinkets. Let's have necklaces. How about, you know, they're going to need clean clothes to wear. Let's sell, and it became a bazaar. It became a, it became a, uh, a market instead of about coming so that they could offer their sacrifice to God and pray. Folks, we've got to be very sure that Jesus is promoted. Whether or not we have a youth event or a senior adult event, whether or not we have a community outreach or whether it's something focused on the people that are already here, we've got to make sure that Jesus is promoted. We give away a backpack in the name of Jesus, right? We give away uh, a bicycle in the name of Jesus. We make sure that it's not about the stuff, but it's about the master, right? So we've got to continue to promote Jesus. I'm not against giving away school supplies and, and reaching out to our teachers and helping them with, with things like that. I'm not against working in our community, but we've got to remember that what we're doing is promoting Jesus, right? That we love our neighbors the way Jesus would love them so that the world has changed one person at a time. We've got to continue to promote Jesus. We've got to also remember, and I'm going to be mindful of the time. We have other things that we need to do today. But, uh, you know, you get a room full of folks, you just want to preach for a while. It feels good to, uh, to, to see uh, all of you here. But uh, we've also got to remember that this house, Jesus said, would be for all people. Right? For all people. It's not just for me I'm glad I get to preach here I'm glad I get to worship here I'm glad my family is a part of this church and I'm glad you're a part of this church but we got to remember that Jesus is for everybody in Bearden in Washita County in the surrounding area in driving distance and we need to always keep room in our church in our hearts in our prayers in our giving for those that are not yet here, right? This isn't just a place where church folks can gather together and act like church folks. But if we want this to be a church that lasts, we thank God for the hundred and something years in the past, but you know, we got to live like there's another hundred and something years in the future. And if we want this to be a church that lasts, we've got to love on those that are not yet here. And we've got to make room for them when they show up and they don't look like we think they're supposed to look like when they show up for church. We've got to love them when they don't smell like they're supposed to smell when they come around, you know. When, when they don't talk right. Maybe they use language that we know is not supposed to be used in the house of God. But if they show up, they come. They're here. We've got to make room for folks and room to let the Holy Spirit work on them instead of us just saying, mm, go back home and change your clothes and here, you know, and then come on back up here. 
but let the Holy Spirit work on them and change them. Folks, I'm telling you, I have seen God without anybody getting up and saying, you know, it's not appropriate to dress like that, or, you know, you should have, uh, uh, you know, combed your hair uh, before you came in, or anything like that. I have seen the Holy Spirit work on folks uh, as people just loved on them and gave them space to where over the course of a few weeks, uh, they themselves made the changes that needed to be made because God was working on the inside, right? And I've also heard many stories about folks who never came back to church because somebody said, oh, women don't wear pants here, or something like that. You know, let the Holy Spirit work. Give room for people. Somebody comes in smelling like whiskey, let them come in. Let God touch them. God can sober them up and save them. Amen. Somebody shows up reeking of, of, of some other substance. If they stumble into the church, what better place could they stumble into? Our God is able to save them, right? Amen. Amen. So we want this to be a church where Jesus is first. We want it to be a church where we remember to promote him in everything that we do, every outreach, every event, every time we gather together, we promote Jesus. And we want to be sure that our church remains a church for all people, whether they're black or white, whether they're new to this area or been here a long time, whether they come from a bad family history or whether they're the <laughs> elite, that we've got room for them all. Because Jesus has room for them all. And who knows what God can do with somebody who slipped on the street last night, stumbled into a church, gave their heart to Jesus. Could be the next Billy Graham or some powerful person in the church. I want to be a part. Amen. Thank you for being here today. We're so glad that you have joined us. I'm going to pray, and then uh, uh, Brother Terry uh, and uh, Stella are going to go out and begin to get ready for the baptism service. So would you bow your heads with me? Father God, help us to keep Jesus first. Help us, Lord, to remember to promote you wherever we go and whatever we do. On the job, in the marketplace, in our outreaches, in the community, at football games, whatever we're doing, Lord, let us remember to promote Jesus. He said if you would be lifted up, you would draw all men unto yourself. So help us to lift you up by the way that we live so that our words will carry value and will carry power because our lives have shown forth Jesus before we ever started talking. Lord, I pray today that you would help us always keep room in our church and in our hearts for everybody, even those that are not like us, even those that we have a hard time, Lord, with their lifestyle or the way that they live or the way they talk or the way they dress. Help us to realize there's an eternal soul that needs Jesus there. And help us to always make room for them, Lord. Bless each one that has come out today. Let us move forward <clears throat> to meet needs and to make disciples until Jesus comes again. Amen.